All right, you guys, we're back with Taryn and Beej and Clark, who's licking my toes right now. And uh, we just, we always have this podcast after the podcast that is so incredible. And um, so Beej was just talking with Taryn about how he feels like people just give up too easily, right? We expand on that, Beej. Yeah, I, feel, I think you're the, the, you touched, you started to touch upon in the podcast where we look outside and you look at those people who are fit and, and natural born athletes and we, we cling to that as triathletes like we cling to the the people who hit it out on their first or second trip um but where where the true success lies and where the the work is done is for those athletes that keep going forward like they don't stop like in your experience you you didn't get your fastest marathon until you your 52nd marathon so it takes a long time so it's the long game and we like to say a little bit every day over a long period of time like consistency so why do you think people give up so soon i think it's the nature of you know instant gratification i think right now we we want results we want to we want to sign up for that race and then we want to do it and we want to do well and maybe we don't want to train anymore Maybe life is, you know, life is too complicated. There's too much other other stuff going on. We don't want to you know, put the time into it. Um, you didn't do as well as you thought you would. You know, things things did go wrong. Maybe you did have a glitch on the bike and like, oh, I don't want to deal with that again. Um, but I think that that's, that's really just the, the, the perspective shift that I think we need to take is like, it's that makes the story that much sweeter. You know, that like maybe that didn't happen that well that, that first time, but you know what, I'm going to go back in and maybe I'm going to try this workout differently or, 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 or you know what, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get a coach now. I'm going to approach a coach and because I don't know, I think that's the thing too, is especially with triathlon, there's so much you don't know. I mean, there's so much information out there. Like my first one, I trained by myself, but my older brother had done one. And really the only advice he gave me was ride the bike a lot, just ride the bike all the time. And that's 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 great, but there's a whole lot more to it than that, obviously. So that got me through my first one, but that wasn't going to, uh, you know, wasn't going to get me to where I really wanted to go. So. Come here, Clark. Come on, here, buddy. Clark does this. Like, he knows when the podcast is over, and then he comes over and jumps on the guest. I'm a huge fan of Clark, by the way. All right. <laughs> All right. That, that actually leads to, and we'll, we'll just do a few minutes here on this. Um, what was, uh, and that might have been the worst advice you got, but what was the worst ad- triathlon advice that you got? This would be a fun little round table. I know what mine is. What was the worst? We don't have to say who gave it to you. What was the worst triathlon advice you got? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't know if I've really gotten any. I'm sure that I have. Um, oh, no, no. I do know. <laughs> I do know. And I mentioned in my book, and I won't. I purposely did not say his name. It is we a he. Say, I won't say his name. But punish no, yes, anyone. no. This is this is this is a huge lesson to learn. So I think you know, especially in triathlon, salt. I think we all. I did not learn the lessons of salt until Ironman St. George, 2012, which was the legendary year that it was like 35% attrition rate or something crazy. And I'm very happy to say that I did cross the finish line, but it was a rough day. And beforehand, um. Actually, no, I'm sorry. This is, this is in 2011. I did both those years, but the advice came in 2011. It was a really hot year that year. And I had a, uh, had some friends who they went to this pro's house and he basically gave this little like pre-race talk. And he just said, you know, don't worry about bringing any salt with you. There's plenty of salt in the, in, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the, in the drink and the energy drink. So don't worry about that. I'll, I'll, you know, and I didn't, and I really wish I did because that night, um, I got, luckily I made it back to my hotel and my husband doesn't, doesn't go to all my races with me. Um, but luckily he was at this one and I passed out in the shower and just got sick every way you can think about getting sick, super sick. And luckily he was, I was just, I think I, I don't know to this day, I'm not sure if it was hypertrimia or, 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 um, what it was, because I don't think I was dehydrated. I think I maybe like had too much. Too I wasn't much absorbing water it. and no, and exactly. No salt. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, I learned my lesson the hard way, but luckily I did finish and I was, and, and he just gave me a bunch of noon and I kind of came back to life. But, um, yeah, I think you need to take, you need to figure out on your own. <laughs> Don't go off. What, Karen a, what a pro is never thinks. without salt these days. Beach, never what without the salt. worst advice you ever got? I think I'm torn between the advice that I gave myself oh, when I was figuring out my nutrition. So another nutrition where I was cramping on the run and I went on a race at the Union Res. It was an Olympic distance race. And I said, I'm not going to take any nutrition. I'm just going to go hard and not have the, I'm going to remove the nutrition issue altogether. 
had a good swim. I had a really good bike. I think I was third off the bike. I don't know where I finished, but it definitely wasn't in the top 50. <laughs> Crash and burned. But, uh, but I had to learn that for myself. You know, I had to see like, okay, well, obviously uh, you need nutrition. And, um, and to come full circle, I learned that um, it wasn't the nutrition specifically that was causing my cramp. It was the, the fitness level that I was racing at versus training at. So I think people can get caught up in going really fast on race day, but they haven't done that training to allow for their bodies to adapt to that intensity. And therefore your body's in a state of like panic and it's going to cramp up. It's going to seize up because you're going way too hard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I'm on the, I'm on high alert for my own advice and I've got, I'm very fortunate <laughs> to have Jess on my shoulder right. saying like, are you sure you want to do that? Does that really sound like a good idea? <laughs> I remember that one. I remember that race. You're like, like I'm just going to remove the nutrition totally. As in, I'm not going to take any for this race. Oh my God. It was so, I remember you coming. I was like, great bike. And you were dying on the run. It was hysterical. The worst advice I got was for my first Ironman, which ended up being a huge gift, of course, um, was eat as much as you possibly can on the bike. Just eat as much as you, po I was like, banana orange, whatever, everything in the mouth. I mean, so much food. I got off that bike to go run a marathon and it I was like stuffed to the gills with food. It was like Thanksgiving full. It was the one and only time that I projectile threw up. I never, I had heard that so many times in my life, right? It's like has. It actually exists. <laughs> It's like a rocket. It was the worst advice. And I came off that Iron Man saying, I, cause I thought I was going to die. And, um, and after the projectile, I came back to life, but I thought to myself, I never, I vow never to have nutritional issues ever again. It was the worst. And I haven't had any sense. I just got it all dialed in. It was good. All right. Sometimes we have to learn the hard way. You know? Yeah, it's okay. It's Just all right. don't take any advice from BJ, even though he's a triathlon and ultra running coach now. <laughs> I feel like you're past that now, babe. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I figured it out. All right, cool. Hey, all right, one more thing before we uh, we we uh, drop the mics here is uh, what's your favorite like what's your favorite go to plant based like what do you crave after like a long workout? Well, I've gotten down my um my smoothie. It's pretty tight these days, I have right. to say. So we go, we, um, we go uh, like two two handfuls of kale, like raw, like dinosaur kale, um, a scoop of uh, Vega vanilla protein, the sport protein, dried goji berries, chia seeds. Um, I'm a big adaptogen fan, so moon juice adaptogens like the ashwagandha, reishi, um, lakuma. What else? A couple apples, banana, water, some coconut water maybe, and uh, then for a little for a little taste, a little texture. After that's all spun up, I go with some dried cranberries and some pepitas. Boom! Oh, Delicious. Sounds so good. Where do you get your like the adaptogens? Where do you? A uh, moon moonjuice dot com. Moon moon juice. Juice, yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing the wisdom, guys, and the and the not so wisdom advice. <laughs> so take salt take nutrition and pace the eating on the bike and you should have great success. Go get your pro card.